Uh, my dad's name was Tim Presentine. He was an absolutely outstanding guy, truly one of a kind. 52 years old, 2007. He had just moved to South Florida. It was his dream to live on a golf course, a banker, so he was in finance, a busy guy, uh, but still found the time to be active. Took care of himself as best that he could, uh, and always found the time to make sure he got a handful of rounds of golfing every week. Uh, that was a huge love of his. That and fishing and spending time with us. Make sure that we had memories uh, that we could share with each other and pass on to our kids at some point. Truly dedicated his life to being a great father. So my father, Arthur O'Krent, he was, he was a man that was full of life, lived to be 62, left us way too early in 1997 due to heart disease. Um, but he was, he, was a, he was a big man. He was, had a huge personality. Everybody loved him. Always, always had a joke. Loved making people smile. And he was good at it. He was involved in so many things in the community. Um, Boysville had a love for kids, had a love for the outdoors, golf, tennis. I got to work next to him for so long, and it, it got to the point that I was going to write a book, Arthur O'Krent by numbers, because any given situation, I knew what he was going to say. I knew the smile, he knew his audience, and he was just, people loved him, and I miss him. I could describe John in a few words. I think I would say he's a husband, he's a father, he's a coach, he's a friend, he's a son, he's everything that you could imagine wanting a man to be. He had videos where he was benching 400 pounds and squatting, you know, 500 pounds. I mean, the man was a beast. He had so much energy, he was so vibrant, he was just so passionate, just everything about him just was amazing and I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for a better husband. I mean, and honestly, football, football was his life. Um, his family was his life. Having those two things together, I mean, that's what we did for fun. We went out and with the boys, even when they were little, played catch. We would go on the field and just run around and be a family, but I mean, those were the two things that meant the world to John were football and family. Uh, it was a day just like any other. He came home from work a little bit early and uh, came inside his house, talked to my mom, decided to go to the gym to relieve some stress, get a workout in uh, early afternoon uh, before they planned on going out to dinner. And about 45 minutes later, my mom got a phone call that he had collapsed on the floor of the gym and uh, had a massive heart attack. It was June of 2007, my fiance, had a wedding planned three months away, and that was a phone call that changed everything. I jumped in my car, drove as fast as I could across the state, and by the time I got there, uh, he had passed away. Uh, it was literally the most unexpected thing that we could have imagined. Um, a time where we were planning this massive celebration and trying to coordinate you know, the guest list and final accommodations uh, for the day that Melissa and I were gonna be married, and instead, we had to switch gears and start planning a funeral. Try to take care of uh, planning something that you hope you never have to. And I think the hardest thing is that day specifically was probably the day I needed him most. And I didn't have him. So. You find a way. And we put it together. Um, we decided that we were going to stay the course and we weren't going to change our plans. And although life was very different from that point forward, um, we were going to do everything that we could to support each other and uh, to be the family that he helped create. One of his downfalls is, is he played the weight game, the weight loss game. Believe it or not, he was about my size and was uh, probably had a 
that sometimes 100 pounds on me. So he would turn around and he'd lose 30, 40 pounds, and then he'd get on the next fad diet, and he, you know, or he'd lose it, and then he'd put it back on and back and forth and back and forth. And now we all know how bad that is for our heart, but he would do this on a, on a regular basis. Uh, one day he's not feeling good, goes to see his cardiologist. They put him through the stress test and of course take him to the cath lab and he's got a single blockage. So fortunately they're able to put in a stent, comes out of that and he's feeling a million bucks again. He just feels great and a few months after that starts to feel down again, starts getting tired. It was a big deal. I lost him. John died on March 21st, 2014. Um, the night before, me and my son, we went to bed. Tanner, he was four years old at the time. Um, John came with us. He, we went to sleep and John snored really, really loud usually. And I woke up at 3.47 that morning and I didn't hear anything. So my first thing was, some, just first inclination, something's wrong. I touched him and he was really, really cold. And I, my heart just kind of went fast and I, I put my hand on his chest and I couldn't feel him breathe. Um, so I immediately went over, grabbed my phone, went over to the side of the bed I knew that he was gone as soon as I went there, but I felt like I had to try to save him. So I started CPR and I called 911. My four-year-old son, he woke up while I was doing CPR on him and he asked me what I was doing. And I just told him to put his blanket over his head and we sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star as I was doing CPR on John. Um, everyone came in and they told me that he had passed away and it was found that he had an enlarged heart and he just, his heart just stopped working at the age of 33 years old, just stopped. We have to figure out how to move on, but we don't move on without dad. Dad's still gonna be with us no matter what. Even though he's not here, he's still gonna be with us and we still go to football games, and we still, every year at the football games, we let balloons go, and just so Dad knows that we're, we're still, we're still, we still think he's coaching upstairs, so we still, we still go to the games, like he's still gonna be on that field. At the time, I didn't know much about American Heart Association, but given the fact that I truly felt that this whole scenario, what happened to my father, as a corollary, what happened to all of us, everything that we were dealing with probably could have been prevented. Um, that's when I got involved and wanted to do whatever I could um, to try to help to make sure that this wasn't something that anybody else had to experience or the family that had to lose their father or their husband, or their best friend. So that's what led me to AHA. So when Tanner was in kindergarten, um, Jump Roper Heart came to his school. And, you know, both of us just had this awesome idea. You know what? This is a perfect mission for us. This is, Tanner came up to me and says, Mom, I want to make sure that no other kids lose their mom or dad. So we had a big campaign and his kindergarten year, Tanner raised over $3,000 for his school. They get prizes afterwards. So Tanner had a tablet and all sorts of prizes that he got from the American Heart Association. And with the help of the American Heart Association, we were able to find a, a child that had heart problems and that just had heart surgery. And Tanner was able to donate to her everything that he had won for the American Heart Association. And then this year, Tanner, again, he raised over $2,000 and Jackson raised also $2,000. 
and again, they're going to find children and both of them are going to donate everything that they have, they've earned. The Heart Association approached me to get involved on the board. So I, I jumped at the chance and I was chairman of the board during uh, 2001, during 9-11. Not only did things change for the Heart Association, but things changed for everybody. It's 9-11. Everybody's scared, everybody's got to redirect, especially all nonprofits that rely on funding coming in to do their good. Well, Heart Association is no different. So as an executive committee, we had to make that decision as to how are we going to cope. We cut three big events three fun events. We had a skeet shoot, which had been around for a while and done well. We cut the fashion show. The other one that we cut, but didn't cut, was the Cardiac Classic Golf Tournament. My wife Margie and I decided that we would take on the tournament ourselves. We'd run it as a third party event and not, not involve the Heart Association at all. No staff involvement, all we would do is raise funds and donate it back to the Heart Association. Fortunately for us, the committee of the Cardiac Classic, a lot of friends, a lot of former board members along with me, came along to, to help form the Arthur O'Krent Golf Classic. And from that first tournament 15 years ago, together they have raised over a million dollars for the benefit of the American Heart Association to help try to get a handle on this disease, to try to help somebody else. So in some small way, I'm helping my dad live on through the Arthur Kent Golf Classic. As a mom, I wanna to try to protect these guys from something happening to them. So any money that we can raise I'm hoping that new research is going to be available. Any tests that, that can benefit them, you know, people are dying younger and younger of heart disease. And if we can do something as a family to save at least one life, if not thousands of lives, our job is done. We have honored our dad, their dad. We have honored my husband. And John Mudge deserves to be honored. And we're gonna do it for him.